Today I'm going to answer an FRQ from 2002, question number two. And in this problem, I'm giving the rate at which people entering the amusement park given by E of T. I am also given another rate of which the people leave the same amusement park on the same day given by L of T. So both E of T and L of T are measured in people per hour at time T, which is measured in hours after midnight. These functions are valid between 9 and 23, which is the hours during which the park is opened. Now at time t is equal to 9, there are no people in the park, and we're going to uh, write out our function or the given function in this question, which is e of t, which is the rate at which the people are entering the park. So I'll just write rate of entering. We are also given a function of L of t, which is the rate of people leaving. Now, it's a common practice uh, for me to just plug in the value of the given function in my calculator. So you will see in my TI-84 at y equals, I have already put in y sub 1, which is my E of t in my TI-84 and y sub 2 which is the given function right here in our FRQ and this will be my L of t. So now that I have set up my function in my calculator I can easily plug in or get those function in my calculator whenever I'm answering the problems from A through letter D. So let's start with problem letter A. On problem letter A, we are asked to find how many people have entered the park by 5 p.m. And 5 p.m. is t is equal to 17, and we need to round our answer to the nearest whole number. So to set up our equation, since we are being asked to find how many people have entered the park, we're going to be using our model, which is e of t, and find the integral of our e of t from 9 a.m. up to 5 p.m., which is t equals 17 dt. So this is our our integral of our function from 9 through 17 of the rate of people entering the park. So using our calculator, math 9 from 9 through 17, and we know that y sub 1 is our function for the rate of the people entering, so vars function y sub 1 dx, and it's giving us 6,004.270. And since we are required to answer our problem or our answer uh, to round it up to the nearest whole number, we can say that there are 6,004 people who have entered the park at 5 p.m. So that is question letter A. Now, question letter B. We are asked that the price of the admission to the park is $15 until 5 p.m. And after 5 p.m., the price of admission to the park is $11. Now, how many dollars are collected from admissions to the park on the given day? And we need to round our answer again to the nearest whole number. So in this particular problem, we're going to um, separate our um, integral into two. One at the rate um, from 9 p.m. up until 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and from 5 p.m. up until 11 p.m. So if we're going to write out our model for this problem, we're just going to find the integral of e of t dt, which is our model of the rate of people entering the amusement park from 9 up until 5 p.m., which is 17. And we know that from this interval, the amount of uh, ticket is at $15. So we're going to multiply that in our 
integral notation. And then from 5 o'clock up until 11 p.m., the price of the ticket is now $11. So we will add it up to the same model, which is E of T dt integral from now we're going to write from 17 up until 23 which is 11 p.m. and the prices for admission between 5 to 11 is $11 and using our calculator so that is why it's um, really convenient if you're going to plug in all the values in your calculator for y sub 1 or y sub 2 no matter um, to easily call the function in your calculator so 15 and then the integral math 9 from 9 to 17 of your e sub e of t which is y sub 1 so vars y sub 1 dx added to 11 math 9 17 through 23 of your function e of t which is also y sub 1 and your calculator is going to generate the amount of money uh, coming in uh, between uh, this interval and it's at 10,000 or 104,048 So we can say that for letter C, we are asked to uh, uh, or we are given h of t which is equal to um, the integral of e of x minus l of x dx from 9 to t on the interval 9 to 23 and we need to um, and we're also given the value of h of 17 to the nearest whole number that is 3725 and the question here is to find the value of a h prime of 17 and explain the meaning of h of 17 and h prime of 17 in the context of the park so letter c h of t is the integral of e of x minus l of x dx from 9 to t and we're supposed or we are also given the value of h of 17 which is equal to 3725 we need to find h prime of 17 so to find h prime of 17 we need to find h prime of t per first using the given model and by fundamental theorem of calculus the derivative of the function h of t given by this model is simply e of x minus l of x so now that we have our function h prime of t, we can easily find h prime of 17 by plugging in the value of e of 17 minus l of 17. So in our calculator, since we have e of x and l of x given by y sub 1 and y sub 2, um, going to uh, the table setting, make sure that your independent is asked and going back to the table. So if we plug in 17 in our function, we'll find y sub 1 being equal to 380.49 minus 760.85. And to find the difference between the two, we can go to y sub 3 and simply 
find the difference between y sub 1 and y sub 2. And going back to the table, we are seeing y sub 3 being equal to negative 3, 8, 0, 0.4. So this is the value of our h prime of 17. Now after finding the value of h prime of 17, we are now tasked to explain what it means by h of 17 and h prime of 17. So in this particular case, h of 17, um, if we're going to find the value of h of 17 using our calculator, math, which is 9 to 17, of the function e of x minus l of t, which is y sub 2, dx, it's giving us 3724.932. Which means at t equals 17, there are 3,724 people in the park. And at t equals 17, the number of people in the park was decreasing. So that is how we answer problem letter C. Now for problem letter D, and on part D we're going to find the absolute maximum of our value between the interval of 9 and 23. So to find the critical number of our function, we need to set h prime of t to 0, and we know that h prime of t from our answer previously is given by e of t minus l of t. So to find l of t or e of t minus l of t equal to zero, what we can do is graph our function and see where the point of intersection of e of t and l of t. So we know that in our y sub 1 and y sub 2 we have the function and Let's turn off y sub 3 and check the graph of the function. Now, since we're not seeing the graph in our graphing calculator, what we can do is change the setting of our windows using the interval that is given. And x minimum will be at 9 with an x maximum of 23. Zoom fit. So we can see the graph. And now we're seeing our function. And our task right now is to find the point of intersection of our graph to find where our function is at the maximum. So to find the point of intersection of E of t and L of t, we can go and use this calculation function of our TI-84, go to intersect, and this is our first graph, which is the blue graph right here, and the other graph, and it's going to give us the critical number, which is 